Hello, my friends across the world. This is Linda Larson Schlitz, counselor from Wausau, Wisconsin. Grateful to be doing, I believe this is my 100th message on Saturday mornings that I have started during the pandemic by request of Pastor Daniel from India. So thank you again for this opportunity. It has become my my best time of the week because just getting up in the morning and praying, God, what, you, what would you like me to speak? I, I tried preparing days before and that didn't work. So now I can just say, God, what's your message? And today the message is something that I got last night at an amazing uh, event for those of us who were part of this book called Dear Haters, Letters from People That Overcame Adversity. And this is something that I, I want to tell you, if you're watching this, you could be the next person writing a letter and getting your name on a book. It's an amazing mission of this fantastic organization. And I just really love the Kingdom Anthologies Publishing, and we've got a private group with them as well. Who is your haters? Who are people that have held you down, held you back, that are upset with you because of your political or religious views or whatever your issues are, we all have haters. And I'm telling you this, that I've been a counselor 30 years, and there's very few people, I can't think of any, that haven't hated their haters at one time. So that's what I want to talk about. How do you get past not, how do you not be a hater? And if you're a believer, if you're a Christian, or in, from any other religion who believes that we should be loving one another, then I want you to stay tuned today and listen in. And I, I know that God is going to speak to somebody today. And if not today, this will be passed on and it may be years to come that you'll hear this. Uh, we are in October of 2022 right now when I am recording this, but God's word does not go forth void. What that means is it is eternal. It goes on forever. And if you remember it, if you memorize it, it will stick with you during those times. So we'll start with prayer today. And then I want to get into this message. It's, it's going to, it's going to be amazing for you. So please stay tuned. God, we are so grateful for the healing that you bring for the brothers and sisters across the world that I have met in recent weeks and, and months, and that this book has been put together, Lord, to heal others, to bring them to that saving grace of letting go of the hatred that they may have developed because other hated them. Just as we love because you first loved us, Lord, help them to not hate because they've been hated. In Jesus' name, amen. I just love this. I just love the way that God brings people together without any forethought, without any knowledge. All I've been praying for eight years since I quit my corporate job to find my people <laughs> that could help me do what God's called me to do. And I've been hindered in that. And if you've been watching me for two years now, you've heard a lot of my struggles, especially with my ADHD and, and being gifted. We all are gifted, but sometimes too much is given, much is expected. And God has given me a lot of gifts. I'm, you know, multi-talented and multi-interested in things. What happens is that people like us, because there's lots of us around, we get going on something, but then I'll, we don't have immediate success. And so we're like, well, well, let me try this. And then we don't have immediate success. And then we'll try something else. And consequently, we never really get things done. 
And so this has been proof to me that all I did was write a letter to my hater. You know who my hater is? The devil himself. Because the devil works through others. Yeah, now I'm not saying people get possessed, but I'll tell you, he has got spiritual entities out there that are sent to kill, steal, and destroy. We are, it says, we are not fighting against flesh and blood. Those people out there that we think are the problem, we're, we're fighting against the powers and principalities of the air, the word says. These are our enemies that Satan has put out there and said, oh, go get Linda here. Go, and it's, it, it's not even bad stuff always. Sometimes it is good things. I've done a lot of good things in a lot of different places, and it's not. God uses all things together for the good for those that love him and are called according to his purpose. And frankly, I believe we're all called according to his purposes, whether or not we want to do it. That's another story. But I did nothing but write this letter. And all of a sudden, I get this book in the mail that my brother <laughs> had put together and put my name on it because I was one of the founders of this ministry. So I want you to think about what I'm going to say now. And I want you to pray about whether or not this is you that needs to be getting on your knees, writing your letter to your haters so that you can be set free. So what's the hater? I love this. I, I love I love my brother that continues to come up with these acronyms. Um, haters means having animosity towards everyone reaching success. These are people that in ourselves included. So think about the people that you've hated. How many of us have wished them bad stuff? I, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. There is right now in this world, in the United States, I have shamefully so said, oh, God, make them pay. You know, even last night we had someone attack uh, a leader, um, Mr. Pelosi everybody knows who that is and he was attacked there are constantly bad things happening to good people and yes we want them to pay so we end up hating the people that are doing evil and that's not of God either so what do we do and what is this whole concept of of speaking to our letters um from people that have overcome adversity, how do we overcome the haters that are hating, having animosity towards everyone that is reaching success? And if you think about it, think about the people that hate throughout the world. Why do they hate? What are they doing? I mean, we can talk about a big war that's going on somewhere right now. And the jealousy and the selfishness of, I want what I want. I don't want this country to succeed. I don't want this political party to succeed. I don't want this individual to succeed because then I won't get my way. And I might be harmed in the process in some capacity. But as I listen, I'm going to get choked up to the stories in this thing last night at our summit, which if you want to get the playback of that, you'll be blown away, but better yet, get in touch with me and I'll get you a copy of this. Unbelievable stories of tragedy and sexual abuse and physical abuse and, and someone that was even um, in hospice, not expected to live, you know, in days. And was on this podcast last night sharing a testimony. And the, the hatred for those that were participants in causing the pain and, and devastation. But yeah, how do you get past that? 
as you know, for those of you who've been following me for the last two years, every week I talk about my book, not to sell it, but I, I guarantee you, if you struggle to hear God speak, I share how how I came because I that was not my thing. <laughs> I could pray, but to be still enough, like it says in in Isaiah forty one ten, be still and know that I am God. I just couldn't do it because my mind goes and goes and goes. It's a constant struggle. And when I get stuck on anger and hatred, it just goes and goes. And I get angry and I get upset and I get I get irritable and I take it out on other people. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Is that you? If that's you, feel free to put it in the chat. And if you're if you're willing, it's hard to be willing. But this is what we do. This is what we do oftentimes that we are not willing to stop, be still and say, Lord, this really bothers me. This really upsets me. How can I get right with this? So what I do is I did, I said, God, speak to me. I'm listening. I'm really listening. And for me, I can't just, I just can't listen still. I have to type out what I'm hearing. So I pray for, for wisdom. And that, that was talked about last night too. Um, anybody who has followed God, who has been called, who, they got called because they listened to what God had to say and that what he wanted them to do. And Willie, who is, is the founder of this organization, he, he listened. He listened to God. And, and God said, this is not about making a bunch of money. But there are ways that we can do that through our tragedy. So when I listened, I came up with 365 meditations for people like me who want to hear God answer life's toughest questions. Like, God, why did you let that happen to me? Why did you let those haters do what they did to me? Why did you let me be sexually abused and, and raped and, and go through all these things? The people, you know, going through abortion and the hatred for the people who eventually did that at the time. It's like, oh, what a relief. And then afterwards, it's like, how could you have done this to me? And a lot of people have gone through that. Another testimony in here as well. Somebody who had been through that. And the, the emotional struggles. And maybe it was the person that, that was involved in that. And then you got divorce. And you got breakup. And you got getting fired. And you got people that, that speak all kinds of evil against you. And they lie about you. There is a lot of good reasons to hate people if, if that was optional. But guess what? It's not optional if you're a Christian. Why? What does the word say about that? First John 1, 6. And I did put that in the comments there. If we claim to have fellowship with him, God, through Christ, and yet walk in the darkness, we lie. We lie. And we do not live out the truth. And then it goes on to say, anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light and there is nothing in him to make them stumble. Willie talked last night about there's no competition. No competition. There should be no competition among us who are in Christ, because we've each been created for a purpose. The faucet of hope, which is what the faucet ministries is all about, is that we have all been created and there's nobody who ever came before us or anybody who's ever come after us that will ever be able will have the skills, talents, abilities, interests, and experiences that we have had. Consequently, there isn't anybody that can do what we can do because I'm here right now. You're here right now. You have the opportunity 
to spread the word. Maybe you're not a preacher. Maybe you're not an evangelist. Maybe you're not comfortable getting up and telling your story and actually putting your name on things. That's okay. You can press send. You can press share. And you can do the work of the Lord and, and spread the gospel to the utter ends of the earth just by doing that. That is God's will for you. And not everybody's doing that. Not everybody's listening to God. What would you have me do today? Brother Daniel, he just, he found me, and I don't, and I share this often, I don't normally uh, respond to men who message me. <laughs> I've got hundreds of them, and they don't, I don't usually respond, but for some reason, I, I clicked on his thing and I said, what is it, why is it that you have contacted me? You know, a lot of people contact me for money because they want money and they've got these sob stories. But he said, I contacted you because I, I was led across your page. And that was actually by another, a brother here in, in Wausau, Wisconsin. Brother Daniel is from India. So how he knew and was connected with Pastor Ben, I don't know, but that's how we got connected. And he said, the Holy Spirit would not leave me alone until I messaged you and asked you to preach on my channel. So I've been doing this now for two years, and there used to be a bunch of other people and things changed, and, and he opened a new Bible college, and so people are doing that. I'm the only one on this channel on Rafa Blessings Ministry in India, but I also share it with some other places. But this is the thing. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light. And so when we're in the light, there's no competition. It's not I preach better than you do. I have a different gift. I have a different calling than you do. And that's what this new organization is about to keep doing it upside down. It is about bringing everybody together so we can all do our gifts so we can be bigger than chicken soup for the soul <laughs> because we're going to do these same kind of things, helping people to heal. And I love heal. What does heal mean? Help everyone acknowledge love. That is what we're about. That is what we're on this earth for. That is what we've been saved by grace and filled with the Holy Spirit to do is love one another as he has also loved us. Doesn't matter if you speak in tongues or if you prophesy or if you've got all these gifts, the greatest is love. That's what I want to be known for is the person who loved others, even if they weren't nice. Even if they'd hurt me, even if they've done things that were awful. I have reconciled with everybody that I know that I'm aware of that has hated me or that I have hated over the years. And that's what we're to do. That's what these letters are about. That's what doing these quiet time meditations, praying to God, saying, God, what do I do about these feelings? And then asking him. And I'm going to read to you something from there in a couple minutes. But then it continues to go on and on about hatred toward your brothers and sisters and how we can't do this. And then he says, I write to you, dear children, because you know the father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who's from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you're strong and the word of God lives in you. And you have overcome the evil one. So do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Look around you now. Listen to the news. How many people do you hear that are wishing their other legislators well? Good luck with, with this. May the best man win. 
Remember when we were taught that? Remember when we were taught the golden rule, which by the way, comes from the word, um, do unto others as you would have others do unto you. We were taught to shake hands. Every wrestling match you see, they don't necessarily say it, it doesn't look like, but they shake hands, may the best man win. And look at what's happening in our world today. If people don't get their way, they make up stories and lies and get people to defame them and say horrible things about them. And now the big thing is who's telling the truth, who's telling the lies. So now the the media or the, you know, and it doesn't matter which station you're watching, doesn't matter which political party it is, people hate the other side. Both Christians, oh my gosh, the body of Christ is split so horribly that we aren't going to win anybody to the, to the Lord with this hatred. We have to to change. We have to be willing to be part of the solution instead of continuing to be part of the problem. Because remember that song? They will know we are Christians by our love, by our love. They'll know we are Christians by our love, not our hatred. We don't have options if we are followers of Christ to be hateful. Even if we're hated, we've been called to be like him because he has been our example. What did Jesus say while he hung on the cross? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. So when you look at the hatred, I was just talking to one of our roommates today. And another thing I love about Brother Willie uh, is that he is all about homeless veterans. I have two of them living in my basement that obviously aren't homeless anymore because they're in our basement. Um, and we have a very nice basement, by the way. Uh, actually, Brian's room is nicer than mine because he's got these, I did this awesome woods uh, of wallpaper. So he's living in the woods down there and, and he really loves it. But we were talking yesterday about hate about why we wrote this book, about why everybody did this and about how he could be in the next book because the solution for a lot of people is, oh, I'm just going to kick their butt. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to kill them. You know, literally a lot of people do that. They're going to kill them. And that's what happened to Mr. Pelosi. Somebody came to attempt to kill him last night. Why? To try to make a statement. I don't know that uh, I'm sure he doesn't even know the man, but hatred does that. And I have played over in my mind many times. What if I would do if somebody attacked me? What would I do if somebody was trying to rape me? And we were talking about that. And he, oh boy, I would blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I would put him in a headlock because I've been trained to do that through judo class and self-defense, but I can do it in a way that's not going to, you know, kill somebody. I've done it many, I've done it many, I did it with a pit bull. I did it with a really drunk guy one night who was going to beat somebody up until the police got there. I just had him in a headlock and yeah, I was a little bruised up, but I would put him in a headlock, bring him to the ground, and then I would pray. I would pray that the Holy Spirit would be poured out. I would say to the man or woman, whoever it might be that's trying to do something, that God has mercy. He's got a plan for you. This isn't it. Guess what? Harming me isn't it. So that's what we are about. That's what we're on this earth for, is to be the example that Christ was to us, for us. I mean... We were haters. We didn't do what he said, because what did this just say? Those who do not follow the will of my father, what did the word say? Those who do not follow the will of my father hate me, don't love me. We don't want to be one of those people. We don't. So I want you to think about writing a letter to your hater. And then I want you to forgive them. 
to ask God for the power to forgive them. I'm, I'm going to be doing, and whenever you're listening to this, I'm going to make this available in some capacity to go through. I actually have a very, very short version, about 15 minutes, on healing shame with fire. When we are abused, when, uh, when things happen to us, when we are hated, with that comes shame because the world teaches us to shame on you or it's your fault. And as ch children, we oftentimes believe that an adult's chaos or their actions or behavior is because we did something wrong. Maybe we did something wrong, but as children, that's part of the learning process. But you know what? Everybody is a child of God. We will always be children. We will always be learning. And 1 Corinthians 13 said, we see things dimly now on this earth. Then we shall be, see, be face to face. Then we will have all glory and we will be sinless. Now, the word sinless, where it says, be sinless like your father in heaven is, be holy, holy the word is, what does holy mean? Holy means sinless, but can we be sinless? No, but holy means complete in the Greek. It means complete at whatever stage we are. So when I'm doing the best I can do, and I'm being obedient to the father, to the best of my ability. And when I realize I'm not, then I repent and say, God, I'm sorry, forgive me. Let's start over. We need to do that with our haters. We need to do that with everybody who's wronged us. We need to do that when we text somebody and they don't text us back. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a counselor. I, I counsel like 20 people a week. And that was a big issue with one of my clients this week. I get so mad when, and, and I drop people if they don't text me back right away. And I'm like, okay, we can work on that. But here's what I do. Um, Saturday mornings. I, d I don't go and look at this ahead of time, just like I don't plan a sermon ahead of time in the morning or maybe the night before I've got an idea of the thing, but sometimes 20 minutes before I'll say, what am I preaching on today? And I'll ask my husband or my roommate and they're like, yeah, last week it was on, um, I don't know, I've been preaching on this topic of bitterness and resentment and forgiveness for ever for two years, but last couple of weeks have been real specific to the negativity in our society. But today I just opened this up and it flopped open to September 30th. I don't know why, but this is what it, this is what it is. So let's see how God did this. The title of it is getting honest uh, because I'm a recovering alcoholic and drug addict and have a bunch of other acronyms to my <laughs> to my ADHD, PTSD, all that stuff. So any of them, the 12 step program is very helpful. This one's to make made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Now this this is uh, this is perfect with writing letters to our haters. Sometimes um, this isn't the right time. It might be the right place. It may not ever be. They might be, have passed away. So what do we do? Working the ninth step requires us to be totally honest about making amends. Sometimes we have ulterior motives for making amends, and other times we're too fearful to do it at all. We must accept God's grace to move forward in this step if we are going to make it through. Are we ready to do the most important work of this step and seek God's direction for making amends? See, this just blows me away every week how God gives me, <laughs> I flop this thing open and every week it is right on target with what I've just been teaching. The hope, Psalm 119, 29, keep me from lying to myself Give me the privilege of knowing your instructions. Again, Psalm 119, 29. 
my prayer was, God, I don't even know how to be honest with myself. Break down the barriers that I may be willing to make things right in my life and do your will. What did the scriptures that I just read talk about? Being honest, not lying. We have to be honest with ourselves. God, I'm a hater too. I need to make changes before I can forgive my hater. I have to admit that I'm one too. And then I pray, God speak to me. And then I wait. And this is what he said. My child, every moment of every day, I am waiting for the opportunity to speak to you that you may hear my instructions. You need not struggle over the answer to your question of who, when, where, and how if you only rely on me. I know all things and can see the future and how your decisions will impact it. Do not fear my instructions and what I ask of you and why. There is a higher purpose in all I ask you to do than what you see at this moment. Rest in me, again, scripture I shared early, and all will be well. Wow. Then here's the other thing about doing a meditation. Once God speaks to you, you need to now respond to him. You need to decide. He just told you what he wants you to do. For many of you, he told you, you need to write a letter to your hater. You need to be in this next anthology that we're putting together. And you don't put your name on it. None of these have their names on them. But you can get your name on the book, but nobody's going to know which one you are or which letter you wrote. You got to ask and then you got to respond. My response on this day was, God, thank you for your instructions and your willingness to stick with me even when I'm too busy with worldly things to enjoy your presence. And I tell you, people. When you're obedient to God, you do what he says, you follow the instructions. I said to Brother Daniel, okay, I'll preach on your channel, thinking it would just be a few times. I had no idea it was going to be the rest of my life, probably. When my friend Julia Perot um, asked me, said, hey, there's this opportunity. It was like the last day. You can be in this book. Bango, I wrote a letter to my hater, which was the devil himself. Uh, and I think the title of that is Not Today, Devil, so you can look that up. But do it. Just do it. Father, whoever's watching this today or in the future, God, help them break through to them, break through their anger, their hatred, break through their resentments and their fears and their anger. Help them, Lord, to be what you wanted them to be and to let you do Romans 8, 28 and work all things, all things together for the good. Lord, I thank you for the, the witnesses and the testimonies we have in this book and in all the ones to come, Lord. I thank you for people like Joyce Meyer, whose ministry is kind of founded on the sexual abuse she endured. But Lord, she led her father to Christ after all those years of abuse. We can do the same. We can be that witness to our haters that probably no other believer ever has. And Lord, we know certainly they're not seeing it when they turn their TV on, when people profess to be born again Christians and then spew hatred and threaten violence. This is not of you. God, let us be the lovers of others, even our enemies, as you have loved us. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for passing this on. Thank you for seeking to do God's will. You listened when you said, show up to this thing. You're going to listen. <laughs> Maybe you already have when he says, share it. Because people's lives are depending on this. People die because of hatred. They kill themselves and they kill others. Don't let that happen today. Be the witness. Be the one who loves. Amen. God bless you. Have a great weekend wherever you are in the world or whatever day this is. God bless you.